Well, there's, there's been a, a long philosophical debate about such matters basically since the 17th century. There's earlier stuff, of course, there always is, but it became a big issue. You know, uh, is all we have access to our sensory perceptions of the world and the way we organize those in our minds as ideas? Uh, and this was a question asked by Locke and Berkeley and uh, Hume and Kant, of course. Um, my view is this. So Kant had a distinction between a priori concepts, things that we know before any experience, and a posteriori uh, concepts, which are things that we only know through experience. And he pointed out that there are some things we can't know through experience. Right? We have to be born with them. Uh, early in the 20th century, a fellow called Conrad Lorenz, who was a scientist, pointed out that Kant's a priori are in fact evolutionary a posteriori. We didn't learn it, but our ancestors did. And um, I think that the reason we see trees is that primates that didn't see trees had a tendency to run into them and die. You know, um, There's a saying that the American pragmatist uh, Willard Quine uh, once said uh, that creatures that are inveterately wrong in their inductions have a pathetic but praiseworthy tendency to die before reproducing their kind. Now, I don't know about the praiseworthy aspect of it, but it's certainly true that if we couldn't navigate our world, if our internal maps were too distant, too different from the way things are, then we would fall off cliffs and be eaten by tigers and run into trees and eat the wrong things. And we don't. All right? So there's a lot of learning that every newborn is heir to. But evolution being what it is, it's not a terribly uh, careful engineer. And consequently, while it works well in most cases, there are many cases in which it doesn't work. And for example, we are subject to illusions. We are subject to false positives and false negatives. And we're trying to get the best um, idea about the world we can get given the time and resources it takes to get these things because we've got to make a living at the same time and I think science is not it was once called organized common sense I don't think it is I think it it's a radical revision to common sense but it's subject to the same problems we have to um, map the world given the resources that we've got and that's the time that a scientist can put into it the number of scientists who can work on the problem, the resources that they can get, the equipment that they can buy, and so on and so forth. And in the end, yes, it's a map, but it had better be a pretty damned good one, or else it won't be retained. Because scientists undergo professional death. Popper once said, our theories die in our stead. Um, there's a sense in which our professional careers can die in our stead as well. So. You live, but you're not going to be regarded with very much, uh, um, uh, very much respect by other scientists uh, if what you come up with just doesn't work well enough. So, um, look, yes, the territory is not the map, but hell, we're, we're reading the map as we navigate the territory, and we're writing the map as we navigate the territory. So we're mapping out our world and it had better work well enough, right? whether it's well enough for government work or whether it's well enough for high precision surveying uh, really depends on what you're doing with that map. And I think scientists are more like high precision uh, surveyors than they are the people who write uh, your street directory, where there can be a lot of error and a lot of uh, imprecision.